Well, hello, you guys. It's another disappointing Monday. It's like we're coming out of it's like we're coming out of out of Black Friday, 1929. Now we're going into the 2008 recession. The Trojans have suffered another <laughs> defeat. It's the Bet Online Salute Detroit podcast. We have the full cast here. We have. Hey, we're going to turn it up. Though. We're going to get yeah, it happy. We we're going to turn it up. We'll get, we'll it get up. happy. I look, I got my take it easy shirt on today. Take it easy. We're gonna take it easy. Uh we're gonna let's start with the math scientist. Jamal, how you doing today? Doing doing well, Fred. Great to see you as always. I we enjoyed a conversation yesterday. I I I look forward to today. Hey, here's an inside joke. We had a conversation where we disagreed and we're still a part of the network. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you Ryan didn't find No, no, you two no. disagreed. Yeah, we had a little disagreement. It wasn't a, it wasn't heated, but like, he was like, "Hold on, wait, Fred. Let me get this out." And like, you know what I mean? Like, you guys were probably oh, YouTube. Yeah. Okay. And but we're still both. I'm still. It was. It wasn't more of. It wasn't more of a disagreement. But he kind of lashed out at me a little bit. But I'm still here. I didn't quit. No, Fred. You know I mean? Lashing out at you, never, never. You know, <laughs> well, you how played. can you say such things? You're, you know, we're we're at a minute twenty into the show. You're already hurting my feelings. My God, how could that be? <laughs> you're still, you're still, the, you're still the smartest man on earth. Well, you played for Coach Hardly. O, right? You played no. for Coach O, right? Coach O was already on this. He was okay. I was going to say that you should yeah. be used to getting, you should be used to getting taken, whatever. If you played for Coach O, but never mind. Yep. <laughs> Ryan, how are you doing today? I'm great. Excellent. Life goes on. A sad state of affairs with USC football, but uh, hey, we get to talk football and then we're gonna make it fun. So happy to be here. And we have the queen of LAFB, she was at church yesterday, you guys. But we have six us, if you would have been on there, I think we would have hit 10 easy. So <laughs> I, want, I want you to let us, I want you to tell, we're just gonna jump right into it. How are you doing today? And right after that, give us your opinion of Saturday. So let us know how you're doing and then get right into Saturday. I'll be honest, I'm I'm a bit exhausted. I, I stretch myself pretty pretty thin on Mondays, and then obviously it's a full day of football practice. Uh, but I'm excited because it's championship week, so we're entering districts, and we are the number one seed, and we have home field advantage, and we're like 35 and 0. So that's exciting. Um, you talking about USC on Saturday? Is that what we're? Just, yes, ma'am. It's kind of yes, pain. Ma'am. It's a bit pain. It's a bit painful <laughs> to relive um, because I have young. Teenage football players texting me, Coach, you watching the game? Coach, you see the play? Coach, you see this? And I'm like silencing that. I I can't say that I'm surprised. I'm definitely disappointed because I'm not a fair weather fan when it comes to USC. And I I don't like – I'm never the one to say, like, I told you so, but I'm feeling very I told you so-ish in that realm. And um, I am feeling I'm, I'm feeling hard for the athletes because I know how hard they work and I know how they're trusting their coaches. And um, right now, yeah, it's, it's challenging. It's challenging to say the least. I got you. So that's so a good way to ease in. Yeah, I'm kind, of, is, kind of surprising myself right now. Here's an interesting step for you guys. Clay Hilton, his first two years was 15 and five. Lincoln Riley in his first two years is now. 15 and five. It seems like we hit a low with this USC program. So my question is, where do we go from here? Right? How do we fix it? I have, I have two solutions. I have a solution for right now and I have a solution for the end of the season. So my solution for right now is, you just got to turn up the volume. And the problem was, and I'm I'm going to agree, and I'm going to say I was wrong, and I'm going to recant my statement. And Jamal called me out on it. We were too excited about easy wins, right? And I jumped on the train, and I was ready to go, and I knew I was hoorah. But now reality has stepped in. And I think, I think the problem is, here's the problem. I think that when they were winning, they were still getting pat on the back. They have to reverse that. And an old coach told me this. He said, even when you win, that's when you have to coach harder. Because learning how to win, it's harder than losing. Right? And I don't think, and this is just my opinion, I could be wrong, but I don't think the coaching turned up as they were winning. 
You know what I mean? I think it's, oh, yeah, we're here. We're undefeated. We're here. We're undefeated. I mean, I could just go off the Lincoln Riley statement saying that he's undefeated in the best conference in the nation and this and that, like it was a good thing, but you were not playing as a undefeated team. So my solution is you got to turn up the heat. You got to get on them. You got to go. Like if you, you're you saying that you're, you only lost one game and you're still at the top of the conference, you got to go. You got to you got to start turning up the fire. You got to get on these guys. Mistakes aren't acceptable. Believe it or not, you got to get on Caleb a little bit. Like I feel like it's too much. Oh, it's okay. We'll get it next time. Like Russell Wilson talk, and you got to get on Caleb a little, a little bit. I think that will change the play. I will say this: like I said this yesterday, the the defense played with excellent effort. I love their effort. They played with a chip on their shoulder. Now you got to get all. 100 players on that roster with that chip on their shoulder, especially the 85 scholarship players. They need to carry a chip on their shoulder. And I said this before, people are not scared of the interlock SC anymore. You can't just show up and expect to win. It's not like that anymore. You have to build that reputation. So I think you have to get that fire under them and you have to go. You have to coach hard. Like no more laid back, easy going. You have to coach hard if you want to get through these next four games. Because guess what? After Cal... These next four games are not easy. You're going through a playoff if you luckily get into a playoff before you get to the playoff, right? Let's just say they won on Saturday. The games after Cal, the three games after Cal, you're playing a playoff before they would have got into the playoff, saying bearing they would have won or anything. You get what I'm saying? So, like, it's not going to be easy for the month of November, right? So that's my solution for right now. My end of the season solution, and just hear me out, and Jamal, you can help me with this one. This will be a good one you can help me with. Have a big guy buy a Lincoln Riley out. And I mentioned this to you. In the, just buy him out. Go ahead and buy him out. Pay me $32 million over the next eight years. No buyout clause. And hey, give me time just, to fix it. Did you raise it since you texted us? Did you just raise your... <laughs> I thought you said no. 28 in the tax. Did you raise it for a million? Good for no. you. Yeah. <laughs> I said that. 28. That's premium tax right there, right? That's All how right. we roll. <laughs> if I said 28, I was wrong. It was it's four million, it's four million over eight years. So 32, pay me 32 okay. million over the next eight years. No buyout clause. If you get to a point where you don't like it, we'll walk away. We'll separate. I build a resume. I could probably get somewhere else. I will still be on the so the Troy podcast. Every Monday we'll do a coach's <laughs> recap show. Nothing <laughs> will change. Right? Right. You heard it. But Al, here's, you here's the benefit. Here's the benefit of it. I have a well-known name in Southern California. I know all the top recruiters. I know Jordan Campbell in Winter Circle. I know Malik Afamir. I know all these trainers. I know Frampton. I could get the Southern California kids back to USC. Here's the thing I looked at. There's not any kids from the Bay either. I remember when I played there, there was a good number of kids from the Bay. Like, we're not even recruiting Northern California anymore. Like I'll go into Northern California and I'll get Northern California kids. I will recruit the state of California and make USC, make California the state of USC. I will make it a SoCal prominent recruiting ground. And then we'll go from there and we'll build and we'll get better. That's my right now solution. Now my right now solution is turn up the heat. My end of year solution is just hire me. I'll get it right. <laughs> I'll, I already got a staff in mind I could put together. I, I, I'll put people around me that have experience in Division One coaching. I'll put smart minds around me. I'll listen to everybody. I'll hire Ryan and Jamal and Candace. If you guys want, if you want to come to, come on. But Jamal, you'll be an analyst. Ryan, you'll be an analyst. I get you guys good money. But I guarantee you this: well, I, I could be the Tal hype guy, unless you're not going to do that anymore. There you go. Those, there positions. You go. <laughs> those guys are already, bad. Fred's already talking like a private equity guy. I'll get thirty-two million. <laughs> I'll give you guys <laughs> two hundred thousand each, and we'll call it even. You know? <laughs> let's go win no, some football I, games. Let's go, I said, win, I, some football let's go games. win some football games. Like, and you know what I mean? Like, I guarantee you this. I we'll be it. tough. We'll be tough. We'll practice. We'll have spring practice and conditioning. It'll be at five o'clock in the morning. You know what I mean? Like, we will be a tough team. Nobody will say we're soft. Like, we will build a tough team, and the product we put on the field will be very impressive. So, Jamal, if you know any big heads, and just get to get, get together, get the buyout ready. All I need is this over the next four. All I need is the thirty-two over the next four years. No buyout calls, and we're ready to go. That's my solution in order to get this right. I'll go to you, Jamal. How do how do where do we go from here? How do we fix this? 
Why, wait, you know, Fred, wait, how am I when, so, Please go for it. Go, okay, Before you jump into like foot, football details, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but it will. We got, we're getting what we, and I don't want to use the word deserves, but you're, you're saying everything. You're a SoCal guy. You know the importance of recruiting throughout the Bay, through Southern California, maintaining Southern California talent as we're entering a conference. We have an a athletic director who is not SC. We have coaches that are not USC. So why could we expect for them to uphold what's so important with the interlocking SC? My husband says it all the time, pretty much got keys to a Ferrari and can't drive a stick shift. Bottom line. So before you jump into X's and O's and what can be changed, Lincoln Riley was what he was. Bottom line. It was th facts. Yeah, and, facts. and our and our new Sooner Jen fans will agree. Is. Jen is what she is, and it's seeking its own level. So it's, it wasn't even about being snooty. It wasn't even about being elitist. It wasn't about being privileged. It was like I had to work hard to. I hear you, Zena. I hear you, Zena. I know she's mad too. <laughs> I had to work like I had to work hard to get to USC, and then I felt even embarrassed. I like I asked my husband at the dinner table, I'm like, "Did Lincoln Riley win a national championship and I missed it? Did Lincoln Riley do something spectacular and I missed it? Caleb, did you do something and I missed it, or were we just so excited to give somebody a hundred million dollars to come in and be all these great things that it wasn't?" So before you jump into your football, I mean, to your real football X's and O's, the culture of USC from the get. This was a Band-Aid on a gunshot move, which is very appropriate analogy for Southern California. Okay. So, so yesterday. Sorry, Sorry wrong. Yesterday, okay, sorry. Yesterday, no worries, no worries. I, yesterday I got real big in the culture, and I said it's a culture issue. There's a really big culture issue at SC right now, and that's one of the things I'll go in there and change immediately. Like, it is a privilege to be a part of USC athletics in general. Not just not just the football team, just at USC athletics, athletics in general. Like, it's a privilege, and I don't think – the players now understand that privilege. So there's a culture issue that definitely needs to get fixed. The players, oh. though, the entire personnel. I mean, I'm looking at the rankings and to see 20, USC 24, Washington 5, Oregon 8, UCLA 23. That's acceptable. That's acceptable. That's okay, right? And we're going to keep no. on saying, oh, well, you know, and let your, your boy Lincoln Riley wearing a visor on the sunlight at, like he's a 70-year-old golfer. Like, let's be real. The team is taking on the swag of their coach, and this is what we're getting, right? So, sorry, Jamal. I was trying to be, like, together way right early on. But it, it was, I'm not surprised. And we keep on saying, oh, this isn't Pete Carroll's USC. I wish. I wish and only could dream that it could be a fraction of that. And I guess I was spoiled to have only seen that. But, like, come on now. So I'll right, even, I'll I'll even gonna... take John McKay's oh, USC. At this point, I'll take John McKay's USC. I would take Steve Sarkeesian drunk USC over Lincoln Riley vi a riser, okay? I can't. All right. I'm just saying. And like you said, it like anyone that you would have brought from a USC coaching tree would know the importance of everything you're talking about. We're talking about that halfway through. It is like disgusting to see number 24. Like, like we're one of those teams that's, oh, we broke through the top 25. We're one of those teams now. We might as well offer public tuition prices. Sorry, Jamal. No offense to anybody that goes to public school. Long Beach, I'm just saying. But okay, I'm done now, bro. Go ahead. So, Jamal. Where do we go? Yeah, well, here? you know, this is a, a tough act to follow with both of you. My goodness, this is the uh, the in and out double double right here. Now you're you're throwing it to me. My goodness, uh, but uh, Fred, I mean, kudos to you. I mean, I, I salute to Troy is a lot of things. I didn't realize it was LinkedIn on top of that as well. I mean, that was very well done. Excellent. Uh, you know, we didn't uh, we weren't expecting that, but uh, you know, I I, I totally We're agree with you in, in terms of your qualifications for sure. I'm gonna kind of segue it more to the tactics on on the field of what can be done and I think there's there's three things that I would really look for moving forward here the first is I think emphasizing the run game more you we have to be able to see a situation where Marshawn Lloyd gets 15 carries that that has to kind of be a barometer and Fred you've said it for a number of weeks I think you've just got to play the numbers game more than down and distance game play the numbers game even if it's second and nine, second and eight, third and nine, third and 11, if you're feeling like you got a light box, run the ball with Lloyd and see where it gets you. So play the numbers versus play down in distance. I think second, offensively, USC needs to kind of get back to the basics 
and really focus on Caleb Williams getting the ball out of his hands quickly. I think it's got to be a three seconds or less uh, type of situation. And you kind of got to go back to the basics with Caleb and say, look, go through, you know, three, four reads. If it's not there, boom, check down. If it's not there, just take off and run. I think this element of kind of dancing around, holding the ball too long, I think it's disrupting the rhythm of the offense as well. Because when you're dancing around and you have a play that takes 14 seconds, 16 seconds, 18 seconds, and then even when you sort of complete the pass, everybody's so out of position that it's hard to get back in the huddle and it's actually hard to run tempo. And so, you know, being able to kind of stay on schedule and go quickly with Caleb uh, would be number two. And then for me, number three, I think, and we talked about this yesterday a little bit on the defensive side, outside of scheme and culture and macro issues, I would really tighten up the linebacker rotation. I I would really focus exclusively on playing four linebackers, not at once, but the, the, the rotation of four that you revolve around being Jamil Muhammad, Romello Height, um, uh, Eric Gentry, and Mason Cobb. I think everybody else, Rayshon Davis, Tack Curtis, everybody else I think needs to take a back seat here, and you've got to really tighten up that rotation. I think let's see where it shakes out over the next four weeks given those three tactical issues, and then the conversation around Alex Grinch at the end of the year can be had, but I think there's a road to that, and those would be the three things I'd focus on moving forward. We're getting rid of Alex Grinch on my staff, so don't you don't have to worry about that one, Jamal. Ryan, wh- Ryan, where do we go from here? And the only thing I'll really add, and I was thinking about this a lot yesterday too, and I don't want this to come out as making any excuses for the coaching staff because I'm not. But the thing that I want to see is this the the leadership among the players and kind of how they stand out. We know Caleb obviously as the quarterback is the team leader, but I mean, who really is? the leader of the defense? Is it Mason Cobb? Is it Barry Alexander? Is it Kalen Bullock? And I was reminded yesterday after we did the live and, and, and I don't like comparing leadership quality because everyone leads differently, but I was reminded of that. Um, I can't remember if it was 08 or 09, that Florida team when they lost and Tim Tebow goes to the podium in tears and is like, no one else will ever play as hard as me. This team will not be pushed as hard as anyone else as me. Yada, yada, yada. And this was an opportunity on Saturday for one of these players to have that moment, that seminal moment of like, I'm taking ownership and yes, coaching aside, but as a player, as the leader of this locker room, I'm the one that's putting it on my back to do this. And so the fact that there was no player availability, or whether that was Lincoln's decision, whether that was the school's decision, whether it was the player saying, I don't want to talk to anyone, whatever it was, I'm not going to speculate but it was a missed opportunity. And so now I really want to see in these last four games, the players step up as leaders and say, you know what? We're not finishing seven and five. We're not finishing eight and four. We're finishing this thing the way that we think, whether it's right, wrong and different, whether we're getting coached right or not, we have talent here. We have pride here. We have that SC on our, on our chest and that Trojan on our helmet. Let's go out and, and get it every Saturday. So aside from everything, cause I agree absolutely with everything Jamal said, um, but for me, I just want to see what team leaders step up and really take ownership of this team. Yeah, so that's funny that you said that because a couple of Sundays ago when we did the live, Jamal walked up. He was like, oh, was it after Notre Dame? It was after Notre Dame, right? Yep. And Jamal was like, this was perfect for Caleb to come up and do the Tim Tebow, and they literally have it in a statue, right? So oh, it, I was late to that. I must have missed that. My camera wasn't or, working. Or it might have been after you got kicked out the hotel, one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it, it, <laughs> no, that's that's that, I mean that is a good point. It's just like and Candace emphasizes this all the time. Players are a reflection of their coach, and I think I think we got into, we got to a point where we're like, all right, Lincoln will fix it. Lincoln will fix it. Lincoln will fix it. But then it comes to the time like now, when will Lincoln fix it? Right? And if you ask our new Sooner fans that we have, we gain a bunch of Sooner fans out of nowhere that say Lincoln's never going to fix it, but they're still mad that he left. Right. But at the end of the day, it's like, we have to figure out how do we get better? Right. And like you said, Ryan, like, here's a good quote for you. Average teams, the coaches please them. Good teams, the leaders please them. Championship teams, the standards already set. Right. They understand the standard. You shouldn't have to tell anybody what you have to do 
by the time you get into the season. Those freshmen are there early summer, right? You have a whole summer, a whole camp to set the standard. And the standards not has not been set, in my opinion. So the standard needs to be set. And once they set the standard, you now take the next step culturally to become a better team, right? So that's that's how that's in my opinion how you make it work. But I think we get on too much of I not not me, not us, but I think we accept it for too long. Lincoln Riley coming to press conferences and saying, Oh, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. And and ideally, it never was okay. We were addicts covering up our addiction, but now our addiction is out. And where do we go from here? Do we go get our fix or do we go to rehab and become better people? And that's where that's the that we're at rock bottom, right? According to our standard, the four of us, our standard, we're at rock bottom. How do we get up off of our back pockets and get back on our feet and keep moving forward? That's the question we have to figure out. Only one person could fix that, and now it's on Lincoln Riley. Are we calling for his head? No, we're not calling for his head unless you, they plan on hiring me. Then we could call for his head. But I don't think we're calling for his head right now, but there are some changes that need to be fixed. Before you guys respond to that, the Rangers have just punched their ticket to the World Series. It's October, the greatest sports month in sports. You got pro football, college football. The World Series is coming up. NBA tip-off is this week. You got NHL. How do you get in all that bad act- best action? Go to betonline.ag. They have all up-to-date lines, stats, minute, odds, wagers, whatever you need to get cash in your pocket. Go to betonline.ag, put in promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, and you will receive a 50% welcome bonus. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. Ryan, you have a rebuttal to what I said, or you weren't? No, I mean, I, I, I agree with it. So, um, (laughs) yeah, no rebuttal. Um, I, I mean, that's where the state of this program is. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying we're very low today. Like we're, we're, we're not. I'm sweating over here. These lights are hot. I'm. It's just. (laughs) Well, Al, do you think? I mean, honestly, like I get. I don't want to sound broken. I want to sound more than just what I keep saying. But like outside of Bear, who were national championship contenders that transferred to USC? Like Nobody. So the mindset, and I keep saying it, this isn't some raw, true USC guys. These are guys that were excited to be part of something great. Oh, I get a chance to get to, get to USC. These guys are built off of different programs, different coaching mentalities, a, a two, even a season within college, you're taking on your other coach and we're expecting what from them. And I'm not, I'm saying what I'm saying. I knew this from the jump. I could recognize it from get. So now we're like, all of a sudden got expectations and standards. I'm, I'm utterly confused. Lincoln Riley, like moving forward, capable, he's maxed out. There is no mid game. There is no top secret. There is no red or green pill. This is the matrix. This is what he is. The fact that his homeboy is still there. Well, like I will a, say that's a, that's a, I will it's, s- a pro- it's a problem. And the fact I will that- say this. I will say this. It's it at this point, at this point, at this point, it does no good to the program to get rid of him. Because let me ask you this. All right. You get rid of Grinch, right? Who becomes the defensive coordinator? What you what? What? You get rid of Grinch right now, right? You walk into his office. You, Candace Davis Price. You fire Alex Grinch right now. Who becomes the defense coordinator? Al, Brian Price. It, it doesn't. I'm putting all my money in, all my bones <laughs> in, because I know these, I know you from the streets. So you out there, like I got I got to eat. I'm con- I'm right. concerned, and you're like. Mm-mm. But you're I'm talking about. You. I think Lincoln I, Riley could have been. A, go ahead. I hear what you're saying, but you're talking about bringing somebody in now in the I'm middle of the season. I'm talking about, bro, you're making, and I they used to criticize my husband, bro, you're making lots of millions of zeros. I need you to figure it out. It's not LA Football's network about to give you any more white bird secrets. You've been giving all the, all the sauce away for them to pick up, and they still haven't picked it up. Do you understand what I'm saying? Utilize your resources. On top of, I'm not saying that Riley might not have been an integral part, an integral piece. But he's not the star of a show. There's nothing about him that says X Factor from the beginning. But if you have people like Jen and other people, granted, she didn't hire him. This is this is their norm. They're, this is their spectacular because they come from basic and average. We all talked about what Norm Norman Oklahoma looks like. Yeah, I'm I'm coming for coming for your boy, but that's not nothing new. 
That's not nothing new. So do I think going forward, what do you change? This was their max. This is what it is. You're talking about level up. They can't level up. This is what it is. Zachariah Branch and your boy Marsh. I mean, they're out there doing their thing, but that's their talent level. When you're missing 19 tackles, Snoop Dogg's Pee Wee League is not missing 19 tackles. So this is what it is. There is no, oh, we're about to turn it around and we're going to be great. You bring in the number five team to the Coliseum. We lost in the Coliseum and you saw that that is your sixth man. So what where else are you going to live? What? There's a Mary so, Poppins back. We're going to start bringing things out. It's about to be spe- uh, extra, what is it? Super Califragilisticexpialidocious. Mm-hmm. Not happening. Sorry, Jamal. I guess I'm just like, mm-hmm. I'm like, beside, I'm like, what do we expect? This is what we got. This is literally what we got. Now get it all out. We got it all out yesterday. Today's your day to get it all out. We got it. He is what he is, and he could have been an integral part of making it. And that's the other problem. At least when you have USC trees or people that come from the culture, or people understand, or people come from Southern California, there's a level of partnership that they can have in the community. There is a guy on every coaching staff that was on USC that can go to 43rd and Crenshaw and go and get talent. We don't have that. You know why? You know why? Because you got a guy talking about, oh, leaving leaving Oklahoma was sorry for me. Was it? Because there's people that live in South Central Los Angeles real hard for them just to get to the bus stop. So you're not relatable. You don't connect to USC. You're not that guy. And you weren't from the beginning. And now the reality is that you're exposed. So $100 million, you got to figure something out. So, yeah, that's how I'm feeling about your boy. And I'm can also, I, when I'm looking at, what happened? Can I ask you something quick, Candice? Sorry, yeah. No, go ahead. No, it's your just... show today. You need to get it out. We got all ours out yesterday. That was the plan. Get it out. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. It's been get it's it been sort of an incremental ramp, too. You know, she's like, listen, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And then it was slow. And then now, you know, she's revving the engines. And now it's coming out. You know, Fred, with you and me, it was like pop, 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 pop. You know, yesterday yeah. we just came out swinging. Candace is kind of, you know, sort of feeling the vibe. And then now it's and coming I out. Drink. I love it. So if I had, I don't drink. So please drink more of that bottoms up for me because it probably would. <laughs> please, Ryan, 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 had Ryan, a question. Go ahead, Ryan, yeah, had a go question. ahead, extra question, Ryan. No, and, and this is, I'm just so curious. I, you know, we haven't known you super long, so I didn't know you. In the, so I'm just curious, like after Pete with the hirings, and we're getting like way off topic here, but it's okay. It's still USC. Like, were you okay with the like with Kiffin, with Sark, with Clay Helton? Because I mean, those were SD guys. Was that okay? Um, yes. And I felt like there was way less patience with them than there was with what's going on right now. Granted, there was some more personality issues and some personnel things. And I felt like they got those jobs because of their USC connections. But I do feel like there should have been a little bit more grooming of them through the process that these are USC guys. We're willing to tough it in. They're going to be able to bring something that we can't teach. What Lane Kiffin and Stark can bring to this program, we can't keep teach. Right. So you could say what other coaches, their X's and O's and their credentials, but what Kiffin and what Sarkeesian were a part of at USC, we're now seeing is something that might not ever exist again. So, yeah, well, we're not going to hire Stark because he's an alcoholic, but yeah, he's over at Texas making stuff happen. So there's got to be a fine line where it's like, oh, well, Lincoln Riley's safe and he wears a visor and he like fits our USC looking part. Yeah, that visor really bothers me. I'm like, what? Like, there's no guy that's tough that's wearing visors. I need well, tough. Hold on, let me correct well, you. Kiffin wore a visor. visor. Yeah, Kiffin wore a visor. <laughs> Kiffin's a big visor guy. He's yeah, not a big a, visor guy. A... But and yeah. Kiff and Sark failed miserably, and they're now having success on their third and fourth jobs. That's well, well, hold on, like, hold, hold on. I will say this, Kiff, uh, and I, I, and I'm willing to defend here. Kiff took the job once SC got put on probation. Yes, and the reality was that Kiff was just there to take off water and to make his coaching resume better. The problem was they were very competitive and winning 10 games with only 15 scholarships. And then when they got off probation that very next year and they they just got 85 scholarships and they tried to recruit people and people didn't want to go to SC because they weren't, they, they weren't being recruited before and they were very limited, then Kiffin wasn't winning when he was at full max scholarships and they never gave him any time to build that program back. And they left him in Arizona, right? Sark, Sark is the biggest misconception in the history of USC football. And I, I firmly believe this. If Sark was still the head coach at SC, SC would at least had one national championship and they would at least been in the college football playoff because everybody forgets before Sark got fired, 
Sark was right at the corner about to turn it and get SC back on the right path because you got to remember the team that Orgeron took over was 10 and two and won the Rose bowl. Like, so there was a lot of things. He had a bad, he had a bad show in Washington and it happens. He, he, he lost another game and it happens. He was 10. He was at that time. I think he was like four and two or something like that. People don't understand. He had the national championship on his, on his shoulders. He was going through divorce. He was the head football coach. Certain people go to certain vices and his vice was wrong and they fired him. I don't think me personally, I don't think they should have fired him. I think that they should have got him help and brought him back because he had something going there. Because when you look at the team that Orgeron took over, they were a Rose Bowl championship team. Sark then gets another opportunity in Texas. He didn't go and get another head coaching job. He went to coaching rehab with Nick Saban. He was with the Falcons for a little bit as an analyst. And then he came and finally got a head coaching job at Texas. Last year wasn't up to Texas expectations, but the product Sark was putting on the field was better than what all the coaches in the past have put on the field. Now, all of a sudden, people are talking about, well, shoot, if Sark beats Oklahoma, Texas beat Alabama. Doesn't Texas get a chance to get into the college football playoff? We're not having that talk at SC. I think they pulled the trigger too fast on Sark, and they should have took proper protocol and proper steps to make sure he stayed there because I think right now we'll, right now, we should be talking about we lost Sark to the NFL or when are we going to lose Sark to the NFL. I don't know if you guys agree with that or not, but a lot of people forget how, how much Sark accomplished while he was at SC. Even at Washington, he just couldn't get over the hill. He had a very competitive team at Washington. He just couldn't get over the hill. Like, just, Sark was a – Sark – I'm team Sark too, but – Sark was a very is a very good head coach, and coaching rehab just made him way better. I don't know right. if you guys can agree I with can that I or jump not. in here a little bit just to sort of level set, you yeah. know. And Candice, I I completely agree with you. So Kiffin got three and a half years, right? Pete's last year was 09. Kiffin got 10, 11, 12, and then Tarmac was thirteen. So he got three and a half years. He went twenty eight and thirteen with all of the sanctions. And I think it's fair to say that he had a very short leash with especially the AD change from Mike Garrett to Pat Hayden. It, Pat Hayden just didn't culturally align with Kiffin the way Kiffin aligned with Mike Garrett. And that's why he got a very short leash. So now there was interim in 13. Then Sark comes along 14, 15. And then Sark gets fired midway through 16. So Sark only got two and a half years. Now, where, Fred, I disagree with you is he didn't really accomplish anything at USC. Uh, 14, 15, the first half of 16, nothing was accomplished. He was known as seven-win Sark at Washington because he won seven games every year at Washington. Washington was never competitive. And then if you recall, in 16 is when Orgeron took over for Sark, won the final well, five games of the season, but but he did lose to Notre Dame and he did lose to UCLA. And ultimately, that was enough ammo for Hayden to say, we're not bringing you back because, yeah, you won five games, but you didn't beat either of the rivals. And then that opened the door for Clay Helton, and it's Clay Helton who won the Rose Bowl. So it, what's ironic about oh, well, this I apologize about is, that, dude. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I know, you know, Helton has kind of been the, the butt of all jokes the last couple of years, but... Ironically enough, in, in the last 15 years, USC has won one Rose Bowl. That one Rose Bowl is by Clay Helton. It's not by Lane Kiffin. It's not by Sark. It's not by Lincoln Riley. It's not by Coach O. So it, it's sort of ironic there. But I think, Candace, to your point, Kiffin only got three and a half years. Sark only got two and a half years. And now we're sort of at the end of, of year two or close portal? to. Did they have transfer portal? Not, not to the extent okay. that they do now. Yeah, with Sark, no. well, but with Sark, but with Sark, I will tell you this: with Sark, they had the one-time transfer rule. So the one-time transfer rule was a, a thing then. So you had an opportunity to transfer one time and not have to sit out for the year, as they did with Kiffin. But you also got to remember, Kiffin only had fifteen scholarships for what you said three and a half years, Jamal. So three of the, three of those years, ten, eleven, and twelve. You know, the three yeah. straight Lincoln years Riley, of, of scholarship Lincoln reduction. Riley's handed right. out. What twenty two scholarships in the last eighty five? So no, he he's definitely okay. had a lot more opportunity, and so there's kind of this SC element to it, where other coaches had a very short timeline with much greater restrictions, with the rules not being as favorable. 
then I want to kind of just repeat something that we talked about a few days ago, where, where you go back to two, from the start of 2000. 14 coaches across the country, this is not just USC, 14 coaches have won 23 national championships since the start of 2000. 11 of those 14 coaches won a national championship within their fourth season. The, the only three exceptions were Kirby Smart, Dabo Sweeney, and Mac Brown. And Kirby Smart went to the national championship game year two and lost on that two a throw in overtime in year two. And when you look at Mac Brown and Dabo Sweeney, every time they had a Heisman Trophy winning or finalist quarterback, they went or won the national championship. When Dabo had Deshaun, and when Dabo had Tyler, uh, Trevor Lawrence, he won the Natty. When Mac Brown had Vince, and when Mac Brown had Colt McCoy, he either won the championship or went to the championship. So when you put that whole body of work together and you look at what's going on here, this idea that Lincoln Riley is ahead of schedule, I think is completely incorrect. And I think if he, I would personally give Lincoln Riley two more years, give him the four years that all the other coaches have gotten. But if he doesn't win it in four years, that's now two stops where he did not win the national championship within four years. OU, he was there five. He didn't win. And then SC being there four. And if he doesn't win, I think you then have to start rethinking whether or not Lincoln Riley is an elite coach or just a very, very good coordinator. And never was his thank you for refining and backing my emotion with facts. Jamal, that's why we're birthday twins. Salute to you. Okay. But – I never was convinced, and I'm not saying that anyone is not, I'm saying as an elite eye, part of my skill of being a coach, part of my skill of being a talent is I can I can recognize greatness. That's always been something I can do, and I can shape two left feet into something. When I saw him, I was not convinced. USC, to me, was always um, a leap pad for him in his next step. There was never anything about his body language, about his commitment, even his demeanor that says, I want to be like how we talk about destination. He's already talking about retirement to us. And your boy Pete is up there knocking on AARPA door, making things happen. <laughs> he's, and, there. And, and he's there. He, he's there. He's there <laughs> in his Nike Monarchs. You understand what I'm saying? You got Saban over here ready to have a heart attack doing Aflac commercials with your boy Dion. And Lincoln doesn't encompass that. Is he an integral part of something great? Absolutely. Do I think he's talented? Sure. But even when I see his players on the sideline, when I see – it was a minute 43 left and Caleb's kicking it on the thing. And I'm like, there's two minutes on the clock. That's a whole nother quarter. I don't see any sense of urgency from the team. I don't see any sense of nothing from the coaches. I don't see it. I see Utah out there running it like it was a two minute drill. We know exactly what we're doing. And I'm th sitting there like, I don't, I'm not an X's and O's. I'm not a defensive scheme. I don't know stats and last names like my boy Ryan. But I do know that I can recognize a sideline, I can recognize energy, and I can recognize urgency. And I have not seen that. Coach Coach keeps saying, oh, we need to see a complete game, complete game. Absolutely. Perf game time is performance. But I can recognize that there are missing pieces just with the level of urgency. When y'all say in tempo, that sideline, when, when Caleb was sitting on the sideline, there was like a minute 40 left, kicking it. I would have been knee down, helmet on the thing to my coach's side, trying to move. Wasn't none of that. And you're right. That penalty saved him. Saved him. So anywho, this is just this is a level of Lincoln Riley. There was never any commitment for him to rock out at SC and to be that guy. This was his opportunity to come drive the Lamborghini, be like I did L.A. And now I can take on a big NFL market. That was always his case. There was never anything about me or other people. They can say it that, oh, yeah, we're, we're bought into Lincoln Riley. No, we were in such a, a rush to fix this gunshot room that, that he was a safe hire for us. Sorry. The tagline for the show, Ryan, is Candace gets to vent. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you're kidding. Candace, you're, Candace you're, you're, yeah, you're right. You're right. I, I just want to let you guys know, if you haven't noticed, me and Ryan, hold on. Let's see. Me and Ryan got our fight on Pellos today. Go to your local yeah. market. Bottom that up, please. And, <laughs> go to your local market and get you a fight on Pell Hill. See, it's Candace, an another thing you and I have in common, outside of being birthday twins, neither of us drink. So, you know, it's the two yeah. it's the two no. gentlemen at the top that are going to have to be doing the drinking for us. Well, there you yeah, go. Yeah, drink them. <laughs> and, I, yeah, and I 
I don't want to sound again. I'm not going to ever attack. I'm not going to attack athletes because I I know what it's like to have great college coaches. But I can I can speak to another program at USC that's got somebody that's not going to get it done. And this person, they, they filled this role. And I'm like, it's only a matter of time before it's exposed. So there's something going on that it's like, what are we, what are we USC? We're, we're charity. We don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Like there was, there is something about people being on the outside of those gates looking in. When I was at USC, if you were not a USC alumni, it didn't matter if you were an Olympian, a gold medalist or world champion, you could not train at USC's track. Now you got Bruins, you got Huskies. You got roll tides. You got all types of people training on our track. And that was never an acceptable thing. You sat outside those gates. If you wanted to train with our coaches, they had to go over to Drake Stadium to be trained. So I don't, maybe it's something in the water, the lack of water, the water from whatever. I don't know. I know water is a tough thing in LA. I thought Not Pete anymore. invited everyone in. Huh? No. I thought, Pete, I thought Pete invited everyone in. No, no, she's talking about. No, I know, I'm kidding. I mean, oh, like, I so much and, and like yeah, that. so Candace, everything. Candace everybody. bashing UCLA for no reason over here. You know, Drake Stadium. <laughs> that was a, that was a nice little jab, right? You had to go to Drake Stadium to train. I understand. Drake Stadium is it's a it's a it's a lovely place. Yeah, Drake Stadium is a nice little facility. I've Thank God, Long Beach State has football, so we can keep that out. And I ran it. I ran it. No, I mean, I'll leave it at. There is a level of the, the level up in Jamal. You keep on spewing these facts and Ryan, you all of you and Ro, you played. So there's a huge disconnect. There is a huge gap and it can't be filled with this void because it's, it's not existent. It, the, the X factor of what we need does not exist in our current system. And I'm not, do I say fire your boy Grinch? You got what you got. At least get the fans on your side and be like, you know what? I would rather lose with him making decisions to move forward than keep on patty caking with whatever he's got in that office. Oh, it's okay. And I would like for him to address like, look, what we got going in the coach's office is our business. But I want you to know these are tough conversations that we're having. We're talking about these things. They the deserve The fans deserve to have it. Okay, I'm really done. Ish. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> well, I think I think I think. Do you, do you have anything else, Candace? I mean, we we talked about where we're gonna move on from here. We knew we knew it was gonna, you were gonna take majority of the time because you didn't get you didn't you didn't get it all out yesterday, and it's just built up for 24 hours. Like so, just just, just you sure? You I mean, did my before husband you... always reminds me I didn't play football at USC. He always reminds me of that, and there and I get it. So I don't, you know. But I'm just, I, I am I'm, I'm disappointed because there was something about when I like now I, I'm, I'm in Ann Arbor wearing USC and people got jokes. People got jokes. Well, I, think, like, I think I think I think here's the right. difference. Here's the difference. And let me help you out, Candace. And, and Jamal, you can relate to this, too. So USC is surprisingly small compared to all the other universities that we play against and everything. So sure. you may not you may not if you go to a, another school. You may not interact with a track athlete. You may not interact with the volleyball players. You may not sure. interact with the crew team or the tennis team or the golf team, right? At SC, every athlete interacts with everyone. You know what I mean? Like, it's not very big. USC is legit four corners. It's four corners, right? There's no big campus. You don't need a shuttle to run around to a different class. You could walk to every single class. It's four corners. So when we were in Galen and we were all eating – it's every single sport they're eating. So you knew every volleyball player. You knew every tennis player. You knew who was on the crew team. You knew who played water polo. You knew who was a swimmer. Like, you knew a golfer, right? We didn't have our own facility just for football, like some universities have. Like, so when when um, when you see a, when there's a track meet, all the football teams are going to track me because like, oh, I know that person like uh, that. We 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 associated somehow. I'm going to go support the track team. I'm going to go play, see the basketball games. I'm going to go do everything because we have a close, tight knit connection within athletics. Right. Compared to other schools. So like when people say, well, Candace, you never play football. Well, at the end of the day, people don't know when Memorial Day weekend, we're at Stin's house in Santa Barbara, hanging out on a private beach, surfing, learning how to surf. Right. Yeah. And Stin ran track, Candace ran track, but there was a bunch of football players there. There were basketball players there. That was a great weekend, right? Like, you walk through SAS, everybody knows 
at that time, when you go pick up your per- when you go pick up your siphon at the end of the month, you go pick it up for Monica. You grab the red vines on your way out. It's it's a known fact. Like, you know what I mean? Like Monica always had the red vines. Like so, it's such a tight knit community. And I don't know anymore because I'm not a part of it. But it's such a tight knit community amongst athletics at SC because, like I said, the school's only four corners. You either live in the same dorm, you're in SAS at the same time. You're eating at the same time. You're doing a bunch of stuff. You're in the same party at the same time. All, all, every, all the athletics are together at the same time. Like, so you're not playing football is a lot different because we went to a small school for a division one school, but you built relationships. You sat in classes, like you walk in class, like, Oh, Hey, what's up? Like, cause you've already seen that person multiple times. So like there's an uh, emotional attachment in a way because you built a relationship with the football team, you built a relationship with the basketball team, with the crew team, and things like that. Absolutely. So that's I good, think that's a good point. So I think that's where a lot of people don't understand. And then it gives us an opportunity to meet regular students because we're so small. Like there like were, me. yeah, like no, no, <laughs> yeah. and that's like like Reggie, <laughs> Reggie, like when you think about it, Reggie and Dwayne. Reggie I mean, Dwayne. I tried to sort of, you know, I mean, I'm Indian, so I tried to say, hey, I was on the tennis team, the ping pong team. But, you know, that only gets you so far. So like Reggie and Dwayne and those are their anomalies. But the rest of the players walked around and like you talk and you like like you weren't bigger than the university. And then because this is why and this is the greatest thing about USC, that person that's a regular student could be the next business owner. Right. And you're in the same class chasing the same degree, but you're going to be a football player trying to be a pro football player. But they go chase their career and all of a sudden they open up the business and then you call them. Hey, man, you know, it didn't work out. Don't worry. I got a job for you. You know what I mean? Like because you're yeah, no, there's something me. special. You, you touched on it. I know people see my passion, the emotional connection that I had to that community with my friends that are when I see, you know, Frosty Worker, when I, I saw Reggie and Matt here, it was like we never missed a beat. I don't I don't believe and I've seen the interaction at UCLA firsthand, like Chip Kelly be looking like uh, with a handshake. I'd be like, and you, we'd be like, what's up, bro? Oh my gosh. So that, that mm-hmm. level of, you, and I grew up to that. And Ryan, I'd like to touch on, like, you've been to practice. You've seen these interactions. Lane Kiffin, I used to work out with him in the training room. Pete Carroll used to come in there and we used to make shakes. And there was this connection that we had that, like, win, lose, or draw, I'm riding with you. And maybe you can give me some insight on what that looks like, the interaction between the coaches and the community at SC, the, the what, what do you see when you're out, when you're there? Uh, we don't, we can't see any with like the other sports just because it's such a limited time. I mean, we're on the field for literally 15 minutes. So uh, among the, the athletes like that, like for instance, last week or two weeks, Tuli Tui Pelotu came back with Charger. Now he was the, obviously the great, and I, he was, everyone, you know, coming in, but you would expect that. I mean, he's a former player with them last year with the same coaching staff. So, I mean, obviously that was looked great, but you know, I, I, I've, I literally were inside Howard Jones field for 15 minutes. Just like I'm seeing them interact with the track or in John McKay while everyone's working out or anything like that. So unfortunately I can't really speak on it. The I will the only thing I will say, the only thing I will say, and I have no idea what it's like this year, but I just remember you bring up Frosty Rucker. I remember when Lincoln was first hired, Frost said he did a really good job right when he was hired of reconnecting former alumni players that felt abandoned during the Clay Helton era. And he did a really good job. Now, has that progressed and continued? I have no idea. It feels off now, but I know when he first came, Frost did say that. It was like, hey, I never went to games with Clay Helton. Frost is at every single game. I saw him in Notre Dame. He was at, he's at every game. He obviously San Jose State. Victory, San Jose State. So there is some level of doing something there but it does seem much more behind the scenes than obviously what, what you or anyone else would want to see as an alumni, but it is better. I would say, well, and again, now it's hard to say now what the seasons look like, but at least when he was first hired, there was definitely a culture shift in the right direction. Now to your point, has it stalled and has it gotten any better? Hard to say, or I would say probably not. You know, you know, Candace, the one thing I'd I'd like to add, because it's such a unique insight because I I went to USC for undergrad, but it was a very different experience. I wasn't an athlete. So it's, it is a sort of a different world for an athlete. There, there, there's, there's no question about that. uh, In in, almost in terms of like a social hierarchy um, at the school for sure. 
what's interesting about what you said, and I have very close friends that, from an undergrad level. So, I mean, I can relate to the relationships that you make at that age. There's two things that kind of stick out to me about what this means for Lincoln Riley moving forward and, and how to sort of create that. One is with the transfer portal now, it's hard to do that in the same way. When you and Fred are talking about your experiences, you were there four years, you grew up together, you won together, you lost together, you were injured together, you had success together. You know, there's this sort of ebb and flow that comes with it. When you look at now just the state of the game in terms of college football, Jordan Addison was a USC Trojan for like seven months. Travis Dye was a USC Trojan for like seven months. You know, when you talk about Mason Cobb's going to be a USC Trojan for seven months. And so when you are kind of coming in for just that one year, and it's not even one full year, it's a football season, right? And and college basketball kind of goes through this a lot when with these one and done guys, you know, they come in for the fall fall term and then they don't even really finish the spring because they don't have to. They're getting ready for the NBA draft. Similar situation here. So I worry a little bit, and this is not a knock on, on Lincoln Riley in any way, shape, or form. This is just a, a challenge for him and all the other coaches that have come from universities with a lot of pedigree and history. How do you keep those bonds strong in this now new transfer, uh, transfer portal culture era? And then when you factor nil on top of it, it, you know, you guys talking about sharing the same cafeteria food, having the same experience going through all of this stuff together. But now Caleb Williams is making $3 million a year. And, you know, I'm getting $10,000 for nil. And the other guy's getting 5,000, 20,000. And, but this guy's got three and a half million, you know? So even that experience, it's become shorter amount of time, but it's also becoming more and more different. And then the other point I'll make, which is, I think another challenge, and this is why it's really important to have success as a football program periodically because and i mentioned this earlier 18 years it's going to be since the rose bowl and so you know i remember when i was at usc and marcus allen you know came to a, a practice or came to a game or was walking around campus you knew he was great right it's like oh wow that's marcus allen heisman trophy winner usc legend but i didn't have any sort of personal connection with him because I wasn't even born when he won the Heisman at USC. And so when Matt Leinert now and Reggie Bush now and, and Landale White now walk on campus, Frosty Rucker, Keyshawn, you know, the fave five who, who kind of come to every game, the five diehards. Now when they walk on campus, everyone recognizes, hey, these are USC legends. This is USC royalty. I need to know who these folks are. But I don't have that same. They're not going to have that same connection that, that we did. Because they weren't even born when, when the Bush push happened and the Fresno State game happened and Oklahoma happened and all of those things. So I think there's a very unique challenge for, for Lincoln Riley moving forward in terms of building those relationships, in terms of duration, in terms of consistent experience. But also when you go far enough along without a lot of success, it kind of becomes hard to bring alums back also when they themselves haven't had a lot of success on the field, it's really easy for Matt to come in his letterman's jacket and talk to Brady Quinn and be like, I won the Heisman and you were great. And it's easy to kind of go back and live that world when you were great. Fred, you won two Rose Bowls. Candace, you're an Olympian. You're a national champion. You know, it's easy to sort of go back and reminisce when it was great. But when it's not so great, you know, there's a sort of, I don't know if the willingness to sort of go back is as high. So there's just a bunch of, I think, organizational and cultural factors that are different now that Lincoln Riley is going to have to navigate. And, and let, let's see how he does. Are you guys, do you guys feel that you're hearing what you need to hear from? I mean, we're, we're discussing what we think and what the direction is. Uh, Ryan, you, you see him often at practice. Do you guys feel like you're hearing what you need to hear from them and from that staff to make these changes, that there is no. some momentum shift? No. no. I mean, not fully, especially with what we've seen on the field. Um I don't think it's, I, I mean, anyways, I'm more, I think, positive. I don't think it's as bleak as some people make it seem, but I, it's definitely not where it should be and where the high was when the hire happened. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do I, you you know, and, and just to sort of add to that, I don't think it's necessarily what he's going to say, because I think 
it's hard to sort of get very detailed uh, w- with the media. Uh, you know, I want to kind of come to Lincoln Riley's aid a little bit here. We- we've been hitting him kind of hard. I just to sort of balance uh-oh. it out. Is, I think it's mind. hard. I think it's hard to come to uh, have a certain level of detail with the media. You're not going to kind of share trade secrets. You're not going to kind of go too deep. Um, it's a lot of coach talk. I, I think Ryan, you can speak to this. I mean, you know, you're you're the insider. You're there week over week. I don't know if there's these pearls of nuggets that we're getting week over week by being there. You know, because just it's just the kind of the nature of the beast. Where I am disappointed is when he's not even stepping up to the podium. Right. It's it's easy to step up to the podium when you win. And then when you don't win, you don't step up to the podium. Your players don't step up to the podium. You don't do your radio show this week. You know, you're you're complaining that you had the sniffles and you don't feel well. And, you know, Wait, what? to me, well, Wait, he, what? You know, he didn't do his radio show this week. Because you know, this why? Week, he said he wasn't feeling well. He was under the weather. And so, you know, that's the concern here is. <laughs> When, and when, I, I when was heavily is, concerned because USC has got multiple hospitals, good insurance, and all type of <laughs> anything you need. Well, that so I mean that's the bigger concern for me. It's not what he says; it's it's the willingness to say something when times are good, as well as when times are not good. Because mm-hmm. there, one, there's a one lot one to be said, thing. and then I think it goes back to what Ryan said earlier to bring it full circle about the Tebow piece, right? I mean, what it wasn't just that Tebow was so fired up. I mean, it was right off of that loss to Ole Miss. I mean, he got stuffed on that fourth down. They lost 31-30, and he just came up and just came from the heart. And we'd like to see that from Lincoln Riley, from Caleb Williams. We're talking about who the leaders of the team are. You know, it starts with the two guys that are the highest paid. In any organization, those are usually who the leaders are. So, you know, it would be nice to see who those two guys step up and be accountable even when you're winning, but also when you're losing it. it I, and I think where the media is starting to turn a little bit is, hey, you're you're so ready to talk and be, you know, sort of jovial when you're winning. And then when you lose, you don't even want to show up and talk. And I think there's a double standard there. Go ahead, Ryan. One Real thing, and, then, and then, Coach, we can wrap this up. I, I yep. saw an interesting point today. Um, and I think what made and this is this is, yeah, I guess against Lincoln, but I think it's just in the college coach in general What made Pete so great and so good, I think, was his experience that he had in the NFL before coming back to SC. Because when you're in the NFL, like, it, he was in New York. He like he's, he was in these media meccas. And the NFL, like, media is always there. That every practice, every training camp, it's a huge room. And so you're just exposed to everything. And so when he came to SC, he was like, bring it on. Everyone come in. We got celebrities. We got media. Because he had been exposed to that. And all these small-town college coaches, Link Riley being one of them, but we've seen it from Dabo. We've seen it from some of these other guys they still have that small town coach mentality. And, and so yes, that's, an, that's Lincoln needs to learn from that being here in LA, but it's not that he's the only one doing it. It's like the, the reason why even Nick Saban's gotten better. Cause remember Nick Saban, they went to the NFL for a little bit and he took some of those learnings and came back and said, okay, I need to like adapt and how I do things. Pete was in the NFL and coached under Belichick and all these different guys and learned different things. So it's going to take that like almost wake up call to be like, okay, I can't be this small town coach. I'm in LA. There's a lot going on. It's hard to sell seats, even if you are good. I mean, this was a six and one team, and there were still only sixty one thousand at this this rivalry game against Utah. So it's it's just have to get that mentality. And I, I'm not just piling that on Lincoln totally. That's just college football coaches. It's hard to coach in LA unless you have either a background or come into it open minded to say, okay, I need to change what I've done because it's not going to run like it ran in Norman. Yeah, no, I think it's a great point. And I'll, uh, last piece, Fred, I, I don't want to hog the mic here. The one thing, I got I to gotta go back to Candace, though. Candace took a shot at Drake Stadium, so I got I to come back here for, 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 for UCLA in that the other thing that Pete had going for him, Ryan, in terms of his learnings coming back, hey, he, he modeled the program off of John Wooden's Pyramid of Success, and that's, that's known. It was the Wooden philosophy that, uh, that kind of set the stage there as well as his learning. So, Candace, yes, it's, you know, Drake Stadium has its faults, but UCLA philosophy had a lot to do with, with Pete Carroll's program as well. He did. I, 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 and I want to end it on, <laughs> I want to end it on this. I want to end it on this. I, I, and it's just a personal story. I have my yearly, um, it was in May, but I have my yearly evaluation. And like, there's like, you're a great person. You're full of energy. Like you push forward, like you work hard and everything like that. But you're in the meetings, your body language just sucks. And I was like, I just hate meetings. I don't like being in meetings. Like, I just want to get through them. Like, and there was like, but your body language sucks. Like you, you, you 
give a bunch of good information and you're always on t- like you you're right on it but your body language sucks like you don't want to be there i was like i don't and they were like you have to learn how to play the game and i was like huh there's like play the game act like you want to be there and want to be in those meetings with that being said like lincoln riley body language starts to suck when shit gets hit when shit hits the fan and people see that and it's very apparent and coaches see that across the sideline if i'm coaching against lincoln riley and i got his ass in the corner i'm like oh yeah i got him where i need to be so that's one of the things he needs to change like because then you start to see the players body language start to drift too so that, i think that's one thing that he needs to work on as a professional to become better but let's wrap this up we went long today we our our queen had a lot to get off her mind we wish she was with us yesterday so we get that off your mind we thank you guys for staying with us we thank all you trojans fans we appreciate you i wanted to, I, first i want to thank you guys yesterday for all the views Six thousand views that's one of our biggest watches we have ever had if i'm not mistaken right ryan the biggest yep. one i hope all you guys subscribe we want to thank all the new sooner fans we appreciate you guys too <laughs> <laughs> and what one, one thing i want to so know is this this is for the sooner fans right here <laughs> right there yeah, there, there we go. go for the sooner fans you guys get that <laughs> hey so one thing i do want to know if a sooner fan watches this what is to because you guys said to a lot i'm like what is to like i had no idea what that is do any of you guys know what to is I don't know. Was no. it was it Tebow misspelled or what? no? They, they said it a lot. There's a, if you go back and look, they said Tebow, Tebow, Tebow. So I don't know what it is. Um. Anyway, we lost Ryan. That's how you know we've been going too long. Anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, Underdog Fantasy app. Go download it. Uh, Underdog Fantasy. Put in USC LAFB and we'll match up to a hundred dollars. Athletic Greens, Canada's favorite sponsor. Go to drinkag1.com backslash salute to Troy. You get vitamin D for a year and five free travel packs once again we thank you guys we appreciate all your views yesterday six thousand views we appreciate it we're really happy for it we want you guys to tell two friends so we can keep this thing growing and we can stay here for you guys guys we're moving on we're going to cal we're going to cal the last weekender for us on the road i want you guys to think about that this is our last road weekender going to berkeley this weekend so we'll see you guys on we'll be we'll see you guys thursday but you guys friday will be ready to go and have a pregame for cal i i'm scared of justin wilcox i respect the fuck out of justin wilcox i just want to let you guys know that but uh <laughs> we're going to cal we got a lot to recover on we'll be ready to go i appreciate you guys thank you for hanging in there ryan's back ryan thank you for hanging in there your airpods died your computer died everything died it was a great one tonight i appreciate it so we'll see you guys you know how it goes live free fight on <laughs>